Hello again. So uh, this is the solutions video for JavaScript task two, and uh, I'll try as much as possible to stick to solutions that somewhat involve um, things we've covered so far, uh, and I'll also use two methods to solve this problem. Okay, so um, this is all set up, and yeah. So this is this was the task, and um, basically, to before you start solving a problem, you need to read it, and you need to read it um, say two or at least three times, right? And the purpose of reading uh, the task or the problem that many times is so that you can get a deeper understanding of what exactly is being required. And then start trying to formulate ideas on how you can solve it right so this particular task is it's more of an instructive task because um, it's it's basically it's kind of telling you what to do so what you need to what you're more worried about in this case is how to do what the task is telling you to do right but even even with that you still need to read so I'll just highlight the main things that you need to do in uh, this task I'll just highlight the main things you need to do in this task and um, how we can go about it first thing is creating an object an array of objects called data with the following values so one thing one thing about the task the task I give at least is that uh, the instructions are uh, very important right so if you're asked to create an array of objects called data right then call it data not calling it data you could still create like it could still create um, an array right it has the correct values but you call it my array instead of data and you know you lose some points not because it makes it work any differently but because you didn't follow the instructions right so um it's important to know that you're creating an array called data with this full with the following values we'll do that and um, here there's there's it because it's it's a bit clear here but just to um, restate or re reinforce the idea I also dropped this line that says each individual object should have principal and time as keys right so um, I'll use let's just use a right comment for each thing we need to do so here we can say create data array with the given values and we'll do that shortly and next these are comments by the way um, we talked about commenting in one of the previous videos but basically just point out so right now I'm trying to do less of straight solving and more of like a process you could follow for solving tasks like this all right so next it says to write a function called interest calculator that takes an array as a single argument and does the following so um, here we can say declare interest calculator function accepting an array as arguments or an array parameter or arguments uh, we can use them interchangeably they don't actually mean the same thing but you can use them interchangeably and then um, right so another thing here is that this says write a function called interest calculator that takes an array as a single argument which is what we just talked about and does the following so this is also pretty important because this line uh, this um, phrase lets you know that all of this is supposed to happen within your function so if you didn't like even if you did this correctly but you didn't put it within the function you're not following the instructions and automatically you would get less marks um, in your submission right so the function does the following which means this is still within the function um, and then it determines the rates applicable using the conditions I don't need to write all of this here in my comments for now 
Um, so here in my comment, I could just write um, determine applicable rates within the function. And then it says calculate the interest for each individual object using the formula using this formula so we'll have something else here we, and this is still within the within the function so here we'll have calculate calculate simple interests with given formula and um, lastly it says Okay, not lastly, but it says the function should return an array of objects called interest data. This is important as well. And each individual object should have principal rate, time, and interest as keys, as keys with their corresponding value. So here we say function returns array of objects interest data with corresponding keys. And then this other line, I saw some comments that this line was confusing. And it says log the interest um, interest data array to console before your return statement. So um, just side notes, why I put this particular instruction in is because um, I think it changed at some point or perhaps it's always been that way on Chrome. But from memory, uh, most times when you execute a function, right the return value is not displayed on the console unless you console log it or unless like you're storing the return value in another variable and then you log that variable to the console so uh, most times your um, function return values are not shown right so the reason i put this in was because i i was assuming that it wouldn't show the um, interest data array if you didn't console log it right so the the purpose of putting this was just so that i could see but then i found out that chrome actually for example if i create a variable let x equals 45 normally i would need to do console.log x right to view it but chrome lets you just type x and it still does it still displays the value so um i didn't know that that used that worked that way uh, but but actually that the, the fact that chrome shows the uh, return value without you using console log doesn't it has nothing to do with this this is still um, part of the instruction so ideally you should still put it in and yes this line actually came after this but that also doesn't matter because it says that you should log the interest data array to the um, to console before your return statement so this was already a pretty big hint because this is letting you know that your console log is coming before return so we would modify because this is where we had our return um, comment we would then put another comment here that says log interest data to console and this is also like the fact that you have to log this to console makes you know that you need you need to somehow keep track of interest data because if you don't if you don't have a variable or something that keeps track of interest data then there's no way you'll be able to log this what i mean is that if your function kind of calculates um calculates everything directly maybe in this last line then you wouldn't be able to do this i hope i mean if that doesn't i hope that makes sense but if it doesn't make sense it's not something you really need to worry about uh and lastly it says to call slash execute the function and pass the data i really created so here it's just call function so while we call it a function normally if you define if you declare a function or define a function it it's not automatically invoked like it doesn't execute automatically unless it's an immediately um executed in, um immediately invoked function expression sorry so this call is so that after you've declared your function you act you execute it and then it does what the function is supposed to do so call function with data array so these are basically the steps or these are basically the things you need to do and we can break it down a bit further but these are basically the things you need to do to solve the task
right so let's just we'll just get started and i'll try as much as possible to do each thing under the comment so it's more clear so create data array um, array of objects with the given values so i mentioned um earlier i think in the other class that array of objects is just it's still yeah it's still an array basically so array of objects is just like a fancy name and it's called that because um all the values within the array are objects they just happen to be objects. that doesn't mean that there's a special way of declaring them you still declare them the same way so we would say let data equals to sorry array and then we'll have each we'll have things like this where each value is an object right and recall each value has principal and time as keys I think those are actual values so I'll just copy this and um, fix them in so that I can copy that do that faster so time 5 principal and principal 2000 time so with this uh, array of objects is uh, created and I saw some um, solutions using um, another variable doing something like this let objects one equals and then they will do this right and they will do they'll do let like let object two they do that for everything and at the end of the day they have let data equals to array object one object two etc so this is actually still correct but I, I i think it's kind of redundant i mean at the end of the day of fitting the um created objects back into the data array and we're not particularly interested in this instance object one right so not that it's a wrong solution but you can you might as well just create data array um, directly and fitting all the values fitting all the objects like that so we've done that here next is to declare the interest calculator function accepting one parameter so function interest calculator and accepting an array so funny thing is even though i said accepting an array it's not like you're going to write something special here to make it accept an array you can still call it you can still say whatever you want so i can call this r right and i just i just need to make sure that when i'm passing r like what i'm passing the argument i'm supplying to this function is an array i hope that makes sense so one more thing um when you create like when you're writing because i noticed a lot of code where um, people didn't have like you open the curly bracket here but you didn't close it and for obviously your function would not execute because it's incomplete so one thing is whenever you open a bracket even if it's vs code does this automatically for me but even if it's parentheses or curly brackets or square brackets open and close them at the same time like open and close it this way then come back in and type what you want like it makes it easier because you don't have to worry about or think about um whether you close the bracket or not because you know that you always open and close and if you're using like a tool like vs code it does this automatically so you don't even have to worry about little things like this and you can just focus on the logic itself and solving the problem you're trying to tackle so function interest calculator takes r so the next thing we're going to do is remember all of this all of this is supposed to be within our function so we'll bring that in here right next thing is determine applicable rate within the function now for this part um i would okay let's let's just write the if else if statements for that um so 
first condition is if the principal is greater than okay you know what i think i i should, I should use a loop first so that this doesn't get confusing later um i want to initial uh, we're going to need a loop obviously but i wanted to write out the um conditions for the applicable rate but it will get confusing later on if i don't write the loop first so first let's talk about why we need a loop remember that we have four um objects in our array right and we're going to calculate the rate and simple interest for each of these objects so obvious, obviously we can do this manually like data we can do data um zero dot principal right which would be this particular principal and then data one the principal which would be the next one and on and on and on but just like with the first task i talked about when you're writing code you're looking for how to optimize repeating these things this way is not optimal because i mean if this changes then you're going to have a problem if the number of um objects in your array changes, you're going to have a problem and apart from that if this were 100 objects doing it this will be very inefficient right so we're going to use a loop now what kind of loop are we using frankly you're free to use any loop you can use a, a regular for loop you can use a for off loop you can use a for each loop i saw a lot of people using for each loops we haven't covered that but that means you were reading ahead or you've had some experience before so that's that's really nice but since i talked about i think just the regular for loop and the for off loop um i would use i would use the for off loop so let's call this let objects all right let's say objects of data so what's the for off loop the for off loop um it's just like a regular for loop but it handles it's a much simpler syntax right remember that if we're using the regular for loop it will be something like this let object equals zero objects less than or equals sorry less than data dot length and objects plus plus this is how our regular for loop will be so the difference is i mean first of all this is a much longer syntax and a lot of times people still make mistakes of putting and less than equal to here since this is um remember that arrays start from zero indexes start from zero in array so you can't use a less than or equal to here because that means your last elements or like the last um the last element in your array is going to have an index less than the total length of the array so if, you, if you're using less than or equal to you're going to get an array out of or uh, index out of array range or so all right we talked about that in one of the previous lessons so i'm not going to spend much time on that uh but yes the regular for loop has much longer syntax and then look at this with with the for off loop you have immediate access to the data itself by just logging object because each object this is the identifier the loop the identifier we're using for each um, successive successive element in the array we have access to that element itself directly but for using a for off loop we would still need to do this to get access so let's just something like this and if we check oh i haven't I didn't call this function I'm not supposed to call the function yet but I just want to show but yes so this is coming this first part is from the for of loop this and the second one is from the for the regular for loop and as you can see they are basically it's literally doing the same thing both of them return the same values but the for off loop is more sim like it's it's so much easier to use so uh, it doesn't really matter which one you use as long as you're using the loop correctly but i'm using i'm going to use it for off loop um right so since we have direct access to the objects like the values themselves object this particular um, object in each loop will refer to each of these and i can get access to the properties using this using the dots um the dots what's it called um, uh, i forgot some dot notation yes sorry 
using dot notation so we can get access to the principles that way and we can get access to the time that way right so we now we know that our for off loop can actually um iterate through all the objects in our array and we also know how we can access both principal and time so we can implement our rate logic this should be here we can implement our rate logic here we'll just start with that um so for the first one i think i remember giving a hint that said that you should try to reproduce or rewrite this like the way it appears because it's going to make this easier for you this says if the principal is greater than or equal to 2500 right so this will say if object dot principal is greater than or equal to we talked about the these operators right comparison operators in one of the I think the conditional um, video so this is the greater than or equal to sign which is what we're, we're checking for here and then so this is if the principal is greater than or equal to 2500 2500 and oh sorry and this and is really important because um, a lot of people also made mistakes with and or and is different from or i talked about um last time in the conditionals when we we're talking about um conditionals and um, boolean comparison operators all of that logical operators I remember saying and only returns true when all like what it's comparing is true like both things are true if there's a false and doesn't return true so for for an and comparison to return true both things have to be true but for all just one true is enough so true or false will give you true but true and false will give you false so it's, it's pretty important because just using and or or completely changes the conditions and if you use the wrong logical operator you're going to end up having wrong values so that happened to a lot of people because remember that our final results our rates this we're using this um we're using this block to determine what the rate will be and the rate also determines what the interest will be because the rate is in the formula and we're also going to use the interest we're going to return the interest and log the interest to um, interest data to control so if you actually use a wrong logical operator your answer is like you're going to get chain wrong answers because you're going to get this wrong and automatically you're going to get this wrong you're going to get the wrong value for this for the rate and the simple interest your interest data array itself is going to be wrong what you're logging to the console is going to be wrong right so it's it's really important that um you get this part right so and you can get to right by basically following the um, words used this is an and so all you need to do is use the appropriate and equivalent in javascript which is this the ampersand ampersand symbol two ampersand symbols right so if object the principal is greater than 2500 and object dot time is greater than one so this says object of time is greater than one and less than three this was an alpha that a lot of people had confusions uh, with i saw some people doing something like this um something like this and this is this is kind of how it will work in math for javascript is technically not math right so you can't really expect javascript to know what you're trying to do what it's going to do here is it's actually going to evaluate all of this it's going to do object of principal greater than equal to 2500 and one and then that results less than so it's just i don't know if that made any sense but it's it's not going to do what you think it's going to do here and if you follow exactly what is written here you would actually be able to convert it so let's just Let's just convert it the same way. So this says, and the time is greater than one and less than three. So initially, when I was writing the this um, particular, when I was writing this particular um, task up, I wanted to just say, and the time is within the range, 
one and three but i thought i just figured that that might be a bit too technical which is why i decided to write it out literally it, this this in it or like on its own is a hint as well that because if you convert exactly what is written here to code then it works perfectly so um right so if objects if the principal is greater than or equal to 2500 which is object of principal greater than or equal to 2500 and object dot time is greater than one and less than three which is what we have here so normally it's a good idea to put this in parentheses even though it doesn't actually um it doesn't affect this in this case because remember that for and to be true everything needs to be um true right but i I mean it's still a good remember that this this is like a condition on its own the time so it's a good idea to just put this in parentheses to be on the safe side so here I can say rate is equals to 3 I'm going to come back to this or you know what I'll just I'll just put it as a comment rate equals 3 and then we have our next condition else if objects so I'm just going to breeze through the rest Object of principal is greater than or equals to 2500. And the time is greater than so. And. And objects dot time is greater than or equal to 3. Then. Rate equals 4. Else. If object of principal is less than, so this is this is just less than. It doesn't say less than or equal to. Is less than two thousand five hundred, or so again. This is very important. Or which is this time, or time is less than or equal to one. So this is object of time less than or equal to one then rate equals two otherwise so otherwise is the else rate equals one right so um you might be asking we haven't actually created a rate variable yet so um where are we going to store rate well, one thing you can do is you can you can decide to create a rate a rate variable maybe here, or even create a rate variable here. But there's an easier way of doing this, or maybe a more direct way of doing this. So when you want to add, when you want to create a new um, key value pair for an object, right? I, I'll just show this in code here. Let's assume we have an object x with name Jeff right so X has named the Jeff name name key Jeff value so what if I want to add sex mail how do I add this to an object typically what I would do is X dot um, sex is equals to mail right and if if I log X I have name sex so this is um, one way of adding new key value pairs to objects right because um, the dot notation I think I recall saying the dot notation can both be used to access or assign values right so X dot sex equals to mail is basically saying add a key called sex and um, change it to mail and even if it, it doesn't matter even if like if the key exists if, like if there was already a key um, in the object, it's just it's not going to create a new one it's just going to change what was existing but if the key does not exist in the object, then it's going to create the key the key value pair right so using this logic instead of creating a separate variable that is going to hold um, the rate based on these conditions and then later assigning like later putting that rate into the object we can directly 
put this. We can directly do this. Let object dot width equals to three. Object dot width is equals to four. Object dot width is equals to two. And object dot width is equals to one. So what this will do is that in the same step we are checking if like we're checking our conditions and instead of creating a temporary like another variable to hold the weight we're just um, creating a new key value pair in our object right so if at this point you you console log data you would see that we now have weight appended right and some people also had this solution but they just stopped here of course this is not the full because you're supposed to have the interest as well so this was not the full uh, value but this is just the first step